Good morning, church. Good to see everybody out this day, a special day, uh, blessing of the backpack, back to school day, and we're so glad to see you here. If you're a first-time guest, please let us know you're here by leaving a uh, name and any contact information in the uh, little maroon pad that will come down the pew during the offering. It really helps us, and we promise to be good stewards of your information. We're so glad uh, that you're here today. Let's join together as we celebrate and praise a God who is our mighty fortress and whose kingdom is never failing. Please stand and join with us. Hymn number 110. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us, for those who have recovered from illness and surgery, for those who have been able to be uh, back uh, in the swing of things and look forward uh, have, uh, to, a, to the future. Just the gift in the, this day and age of being able to look forward with confidence and faith in the future, Father, is, is a gift itself, and we thank you for that. We ask your prayers around those who've lost loved ones, those who are in the hospital and recovering from, from illness. And, and Lord, we thank you for uh, this service, an hour unlike any other hour this time in, with the church. We know that the church is of you, that it will be around when kings have come and gone, when nations have come and gone. The church remains, and we thank you for being a part of it. Now, Lord Jesus, as the head of the body of the church, we pray together the prayer you taught us to pray when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to ask you if you would just. 
stand for our affirmation of faith. This is the Apostles' Creed. It's been around 1,700 years. It is what we believe and remain standing for the glory of Patrick, which is also in the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. are so grateful for uh, our children, our children's ministry that encompasses everything from little blessings to wonderful Wednesday to our nursery and on and on and on. Uh, today is a special day. It's back to school Sunday and we have a tradition in the church of blessing the backpacks and making that a part of the worship service. So the first stage of this is the presentations of the Bible and I'm going to ask Katie Draper if she would come up and present, make these presentations. Katie? Hey guys, how are y'all this morning? Good morning. If your name is on there to get a Bible in that list, would you come up here for just a second? I would love to sit right here at the foot of this cross and talk to you guys. If you are on that list to get a Bible, come up here. Hey, come up here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come close. Hey, Catherine, come on. Hey, Erin. Hey, guys, how are y'all? Come on up here. Move to my left. Okay, we're gonna scooch this way. This way, perfect, perfect, perfect. Hey, how's everybody? Hey, Molly, how are you? Hey, come on. Okay, we all sit down for just a minute because we're going to talk just a second real quick, okay? Can you get up here, Catherine? You want to come closer? All right, look, what am I holding in my hand? A present. Well, you think it's a Bible? Is that what you think is in here? All right, so I thought maybe you guys could help me unwrap it since it's a present. Would you help me with it? Okay, so I'm going to pull this off, and I need somebody to help me pull this layer. Who wants to? You want to help pull? Okay, pull it. Yeah, I know, right? It's thick. It is thick. Oh, I see a bunch of them sitting right there, so maybe, maybe it is, but... Oh, wait. Oh, my goodness. That is, that's not a Bible, but it is kind of brown, and it's kind of plain, right? Is the Bible a really old book? Has it got lots of old history stories in it? The Bible goes back way before Miss Katie was even born. It goes back way before your mommies and daddies were born and your grandparents were born. The Bible is a very old book. So maybe it still is a Bible, but we know it's an old one, all right? Hey, Molly, will you help me pull on this one? Here, help me pull this right here. Rip into it, girl. Yeah. Oh, wait. Huh. Well, it's not a Bible, but look, what's that? Do you know what those are? Do you know what those are? Those are comics. When I was a little girl, I used to love to get the newspaper, and it was the very first thing I read. Because usually something funny or good was going to happen. Have y'all ever read a newspaper or looked inside for stories and adventures? The Bible is full of heroes and adventures and stories. So many things happen within the Bible that tell us who we need to be and help our character. So 
while Garfield may not always get the lasagna. In the Bible, we can always find truths and gifts and hope within there, right? So we know it's old, and we know it has stories and truth and history in it, right? And news. Let's see if we unwrap this. Will we get to a Bible? Erin, you want to help me unwrap? You want to pull on this one? Oh my goodness, what are those? What's that? Can you tell what that is? A map. Does a Bible tell us where we could go if we get lost and we're not sure? Now, this is a paper map that I had to learn to read when I was learning how to drive and navigate. But you guys use your Google Maps now, don't you? (laughs) Siri tells you, turn left on 350 and go five miles. But this, I had to learn how to read all those streets and what all those blue lines and yellow lines The Bible is a map for us. If we ever get lost or aren't sure where we need to go, the Bible can give us direction. If we get scared and we're not sure, we can turn to God's Word, and He will comfort us and guide us and help us stay strong. Don't you think? All right, Catherine, you want to come pull one? Nope, she's not feeling it. All right, what about you guys and gals? Can y'all rip some? Can Daniel, can you help them? Can you reach forward? Oh. Still not to the Bible. What is that? What is this? It's gold. (gasps) Is the Bible precious? Is it priceless? Is it worth more than anything on this earth? What's inside the Bible? It is. Our Bible holds so many truths and so many wonderful things that it is like gold, right? Wow. Okay, let's see if we pull the gold off. Are we going to be there? Can you help me? Pull it. She's like, I got the whole thing. Watch this. <laughs> oh. We're back to this layer right here. <gasps> We're back to the present. Do you think if we pull this layer off, there will be a Bible inside? You sure? Let me see. Can you help me? Oh, look at that. Is it a Bible? It is. Do you know whose Bible this is? This is my son Robert's Bible. And last year he was a senior in high school, and guess what I did? I carried his Bible with me every Sunday to church, every time I did my studies. And inside his Bible, I wrote notes to him, and I drew pictures for him. And when he graduated, I gave it to him so that Robert will always have the Word of God in his life, his mother and his father's writings, and the truth that is inside this Bible with him wherever he goes because he's getting ready to move away to college. Hmm. But I'm going to be okay because he's carrying his Bible. (laughs) Robert's up there. Can y'all wave at Robert? Say, hey, Robert. (laughs) So this is Robert's Bible, and I asked him if I could wrap it to teach you all about the precious gift that these Bibles are today. So today you're going to get a package wrapped just like this. Inside is going to be a very old, truthful book full of great adventures and stories and truths full of direction and guidance as you go through this world, precious words to guide you on your daily life. This gift is from our church to you so that you can read it and commit it to your heart and know that Jesus loves you today and always. You are a child of God. So I'm going to call your name in just a minute and give you a Bible. And if you want to rip it open and see if you've got a Bible in there, Please do. And parents, I encourage you to take these Bibles these children get today. Write your favorite stories in there. Write your favorite verses so that these children always have your words and your truths written in their Bible somewhere that they can draw on when they need strength and guidance and wisdom. So take your time to do that, please. I ask you to do it. It's one of the most precious things you can do for your children. And
Wow, thank you, Candice. Thank you, Ginger. That was beautiful. Praise the Lord. Psalm 111 says, I will praise the Lord with all my heart as I gather with his godly people. And I have been praising God since our big family fun day on Wednesday. And I just want to say thank you again. I was so inspired by all of the dedication and the selfless acts of giving. I witnessed as dozens of you came out to be a light to our community. And I know that our Heavenly Father is greatly pleased. So also today, I know he's so pleased by seeing these little precious ones eagerly getting their Bibles. I am particularly fond of pink ones. <laughs> this is my pink Bible. Um, it used to have sparkly pages, but I have since rubbed those sparkles off and had to put a cover on it to keep it from falling apart. I cherish this one, and I read it daily because inside its cover, I find direction, strength, and hope. Recently, though, I did buy a new pink Bible, <laughs> and I'm breaking it in, so that's what I'm going to use to read our scripture for today. It's Colossians 2, 6 through 15. And now, just as you accepted Christ, Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him, and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. 
For in Christ lives all the fullness of a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not with a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins, and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On July 2nd, 1502, A lightning strike changed history. Suddenly, nature seemed to hold her breath. It became very still. No sound, no wind, nothing. The man stood still, aware of the odd metallic smell, a tingling in the air, and the threatening of a rapid approach of a storm. A flash of lightning struck the ground very close to the man, knocking him off his feet. And a tremendous crash of thunder followed, and the heavens opened up, and the rain bucketed down. The man was temporarily blinded by the lightning flash, but realized he was lying in a ditch. Another flash of lightning came, and the man smelled burning hair and felt something warm trickling down his cheek. As the thunderstorm raged on, blackness engulfed him. After a while, he opened his eyes and started to crawl out of the ditch over the rain-soaked earth and collapsed face up to the clouds. Cold shafts of stinging rain pelted down on him. Curling up in a ball with mud underneath him, utter terror consuming him, he screamed out, Oh God, save me! Have mercy on me, and I will serve you forever. Completely paralyzed with fear, the man blacked out again. And when he came to, it was still raining, but the storm had subsided. So he was able to get up and stumble along the muddy road until he came upon a hut. In desperation and exhaustion, he collapsed against the door. Thankfully, the owner of the hut was able to drag him inside, treat his wounds, and give him a meal. This was a day that forever changed our history. Some of you may know that I am and have been a homeschool mom for nine years. I used a certain curriculum to teach my little ones to read. In that curriculum, the writer instructs the teacher to explain to her students that the reason they must learn to read is so that they can read the Bible for themselves. Reading the Bible will give us all the directions and instructions we need to please God and to be successful. The curriculum I used for my fourth grade lessons includes a book called Hero Tales as part of its reading practice. And in this book, we read about Christian heroes such as Martin Luther. He lived during the early 1500s in Germany. Martin Luther, who had narrowly escaped being struck by lightning, knew that he had been spared for a purpose. So shortly after healing from the effects of the thunderstorm, Martin kept his promise to God, and he entered into service as a monk. He was then ordained as a priest and later became a professor at the University of Wittenberg. Still, 
Luther felt troubled. He was troubled by his sins. He had been plagued with feelings of guilt most of his life, and he never seemed to feel that he worked hard enough to serve God or was good enough to earn God's forgiveness. Have you ever experienced a mental attack from the enemy trying to shame you or make you feel guilty over a past sin with the destructive agenda being to make you feel like you were never saved, like God could not possibly forgive you? Well, Martin Luther had those same nagging experiences. He felt very troubled by his sins and that God was unhappy with him. And the harder Luther worked to be good, the worse he felt. One biography stated that Luther felt hopeless until he read Romans 1, 17, the just shall live by faith. Up until he read that scripture for himself, he had not realized that it was impossible to earn God's favor. God's love, grace, and favor was a gift that you could only receive by faith. After Martin's accepted God's gift, his first question was, why didn't I learn about this in my church? You see, friends, in the time and place that Luther lived, the Bible, which was only available in Latin, could only be read by the most educated religious leaders. The common people could not read Latin, and unfortunately, most church leaders at that time took advantage of the people's ignorance of the scriptures, and they would translate the word penance in place of repentance. So the church leaders taught the people that they had to buy indulgences or written pardons of sin or do other acts of service to earn forgiveness. This caused money to be brought into the church treasury and the religious leaders were afraid that if the people didn't pay penance, the church would go broke and they would lose their power and control. But when Martin Luther discovered these treacherous acts of those trusted leaders, he could not be silent. He was angry at the church officials who tried to fool people by telling them that they had to pay for forgiveness, that this little piece of paper could honestly forgive their sins, past, present, and even future. Luther spoke up about this deliberate mistranslation of the scriptures, and he consequently made enemies out of the religious leaders. The evil practices of those religious leaders were exposed by Martin as he nailed that list of 95 objections to the church door, and he wrote books and pamphlets telling the people about church wrongdoings. He even translated the New Testament into German so that the common people could read it. Now, why did I tell you all that? Well, I wanted you to know from just one story how very important it is for us to be able to read God's Word for ourselves. I want us to realize how amazingly blessed we are to have seven or eight Bibles lying around our house or a hundred translations at our fingertip with our phone in the YouVersion app. Does anyone have that? <laughs> Thank you. So I just want you to know that the Bible is relevant for us today. Inside of it, we find our true identity, our purpose for being here, and how to fulfill that purpose. As the body of Christ here in this church building, we must strive to mature in our Christian faith and progress in our spiritual walk. We must also discern our identity as children of God. And one of the ways to do that is by reading God's Word. As God's children, it is imperative that we, one, allow the Scriptures to be the foundation for our identity. Two, 
not be taken captive by false teachings. And three, learn how to follow the Spirit, not the flesh. Colossians 2, 6, and 7 teaches us to allow the Scriptures to be the foundation for our identity. It says, and now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down deep into him, and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. You see, when I encountered these verses for myself, they were able to reshape my thinking. As I kept making intentional time to spend in the Word of God, it became the foundation of my belief system. And I was able to recognize that the promises in this book are for me. And that God, as my loving Father, wanted me walking in blessings. Talk about overflowing with thankfulness. I am thankful. So the next part of today's scripture, Colossians 2, 8 through 10, teaches us not to be taken captive by false teachings. Today's society is full of philosophy, which is just a fancy word for someone's thoughts. The internet has made spreading thoughts, ideas, and information faster and easier than ever. Almost anyone can find a philosophy that agrees with the way they think, or they can simply invent one. However, as we see in verse 8, it says, don't allow anyone to capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human reasoning and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. We need to read the Bible to discern truth from lies. We use the truths written in our Bible as a standard against false philosophies. And I am so thankful that I can read the Bible for myself. Colossians 2.12 teaches us that we are made alive with Christ, which gives us the ability to follow the Spirit and not our flesh. It says, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with Him you were raised to new life because you trusted the almighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. If you don't know, and if we're not rooted in the foundational belief that it is only because of Jesus' sacrifice that we're made right with God, we, like the common people of Luther's day, could be duped into thinking that we must work for or pay for forgiveness. As we read scriptures today and every day about our identity as dearly loved children, we recognize that our worth, our value, and our significance is all based on who we are and not on what we do. And all of this is found inside the pages of the Bible. And reading it has changed my life for the better because... It has reshaped my thinking. What if we didn't have daring and determined individuals like Martin Luther and our Christian heritage? What if that lightning strike had ended the young Luther's life early? And what if he was unable to read the Bible for himself, be convicted about the truth, and then brave enough to share that truth with others? Again, I must say how amazingly blessed we are to have God's Word translated into so many translations and so many versions that there is no way we cannot understand it. No way, unless we just simply refuse to read it. So I'm standing up here today with my precious Bible, and I'm trying to convey to you how freeing it is to be able to open up to Colossians 2.14, even on my worst day, and read, He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. He is not mad at us. He loves us and he has made a way for us. Every week in this sanctuary and in multiple Sunday 
school classes, we hear from leaders what they have read personally in their own Bibles and how that word has changed their life. Hearing that inspires me to want to dig in to the Bible for myself and see what God has for me. Much like those little girls and boys who were unwrapping their Bible as soon as they got back to their seat. They're so excited. What does God have in there just for me? It reminds me a little of if I had a pan of Miss Loretta's poppy seed chicken casserole up here and I was going on and on about how yummy it is, you would be out there with your mouth watering, wanting to take a bite of it for yourself instead of just taking my word for it. So I'm challenging us today to make one step closer to God. If you currently do not read your Bible at all or very seldom, be intentional starting today. Read it. And if you have a translation that reads kind of like those in Luther's era, well, just buy a modern one. <laughs> I personally use the New Living Translation for my daily reading. Well, I also printed a daily Bible reading bookmark that will help us read through the Gospels in 90 days. And they're going to be at the back and at the other door, and there's some up here on the altar. It starts with John chapter 1 today. So if you'd like to start that reading plan with me, I would be so very thrilled. Um, now, also, if you already do read your Bible every day, I just encourage you to start increasing the time. You will be so glad you did. Thank you for listening to me. May God bless you infinitely. The scripture that Elizabeth read today mentions Jesus Christ and the things that he has done for us no less than a dozen times. And in that central passage, it reminds us who we are, whose we are, and who our Father is. That's pretty important That's stuff. important stuff. Dave, I kind of like it up here. I might. <laughs> I'm going to open up the doors of the church again today. On the last verse, if you would like to join the church, I'd like to invite you to come and stand with me as we close our service. What a friend. What an amazing friend we have in Jesus. Please join us.